the fast Fourier transform. So if let's say we have a function that is sampled at seven points, we can write equations for calculating the discrete Fourier transform. And if we stare at this long enough, what we'll realize is, is that there is a heck of a lot of redundant calculations, calculations that happen many, many different times, the same calculation. So why do that? We should do those calculations once and reuse those results. So perhaps there's a more efficient way of calculating a discrete Fourier transform. That is the fast Fourier transform. So in fact, the fast Fourier transform is not a transform. The discrete Fourier transform is the transform. The FFT is the algorithm of an efficient algorithm for calculating a discrete Fourier transform. So a lot of times we even use the word incorrectly when we say, hey, calculate the FFT. Well, really we're calculating the DFT using the FFT. But you know what? I'm just as lazy and I always say that too. So most of the time when we say FFT, we really mean DFT, discrete Fourier transform. Now let's get into some subtleties of some of these algorithms. And one of them is the scaling of the FFT. So we're looking at a, a discrete function here. It's a square wave. So it's all zeros, but then becomes ones over some range and then down again. And if I calculate the average, the average is somewhere around 0.1. The reason I'm calculating the average is because the zero order Fourier coefficient has to be 0.11 or something's wrong. So if we go into most FFT packages and calculate the FFT, here's what we get. And if we look at the zero order coefficient, I'm seeing something like 10 or 12. Well, that zero order coefficient does not equal the average, but it should. So we don't have correct discrete Fourier transform data here. It turns out in order to do that, we need to divide by the number of points in that FFT. When we do that, now the zero order has the correct value of 0.11. So think this way, whenever you calculate the FFT, uh, you'll wanna divide by the number of points in the FFT. And of course, before doing that, look at the documentation for the specific FFT you're using and see if you have to do that. Uh, I'm told that there's some packages out there that already do this, but I have yet to experience those. Frequency shift in the FFT. This is another uh, artifact of the FFT algorithm. So we're starting with the same square wave function. And if we calculate the FFT and display it, this is what we get. Well, that's really not the spectrum we're expecting. We're, isn't this supposed to be some kind of sync function that starts in the middle and then kind of has the ripples going off to the side? What's going on here? Well, it turns out it's shifted. And in all FFT packages, they'll give you a utility that's called something like FFT shift. Uh, that's what it is at MATLAB. So if we call FFT shift, it essentially swaps the left and the right halves. And we get this nice sync function that we are expecting. 